you. Thank you for your blessing, Lord God. Church, let's not move just yet. Just for a couple more seconds, let's just go ahead and just enjoy. Enjoy the Holy Spirit. Enjoy the presence of the Lord. Let's acknowledge that He's here. Acknowledge that He wants to speak with us. Acknowledge that He wants to, to have relationship, fellowship with us. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge that you're here. We're thankful for you. Speak now, Lord. Even now, Father, speak, whisper to the hearts of your people exactly, Father, what you want to tell them, exactly what they need to hear from you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, listen, before you guys take a seat, why don't you go ahead and just greet a couple of people around you. Let them know that you're glad to see them. Amen. Worship team, thank you guys so much for your ministry as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, as, as you guys find your seats... Uh, so listen, as you guys find your seats, I just want to throw out uh, just uh, a couple of quick shout outs. Uh, shout out number one is to any of our extended family who are joining us online. Uh, if you're there, we, we love you. We wish you were here, but nonetheless, we're grateful that you're there as well, too. Uh, the second shout out I want to, um, the second group of people I want to acknowledge today, uh, man, is a special, special group of people. Uh, these people, man, are responsible for making the church run, for making Christian life what it is. Um, these people sacrifice a lot, a lot, a lot uh, to make us, to make the kingdom of God what it is. And so, uh, I, that's, so anyway, so that means that I just want to shout out to anybody here who volunteers at Christian Life Church. Can we just applaud them real quickly? Any of you who volunteer. So uh, the reason why I want to shout you guys out is because, you know, regardless of who, you know, usher, greeter, uh, sound person, worship musician, um, you know, you teach a class, you lead a class Wednesday night, you preach a message, you help fill in, you do the landscaping, whatever it is that you guys do, you know, and, and forgive me because I know I'm missing so much. You fold the bulletins, you know, you help make sure everything's stacked in the rows. I just want you guys to know that if you volunteer at Christian Life Church, thank you because cause you guys get it. You get it. Because here's what I know about our church, guys, is that our church, this church, this church is not built on the talents of the few, but it's built upon the sacrifice of the many. And that's the way that the world, that the, that's the way that, that the Church of Christ needs to be built, not on the superstar, the professionals, but it needs to be built on us. So if you volunteer here, thank you so much for what you do, regardless of what that role is. And if you don't volunteer yet, Hey, it's awesome. You guys can start volunteering. So in the lobby, there are serve applications for you guys as well, too, um, for you guys to fill out. And then you can hand that to any one of our pastors. Or if you want to get involved, connect with any one of us. We would love to help you get connected and plugged in. And then the third uh, person I wanted to shout out, the third acknowledgement I had, is, is guys, listen, um, man, we love, we love coming together as the body of Christ. We love the things that are happening here at COC. And ultimately, Christ is the head of the church. Amen. But, 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 but he has an amazing under shepherd in Pastor Joe that I've never been around a leader who is more warm and welcoming and personable as Pastor Joe. So as a sign of appreciation for him, can we just clap and honor him? Thank you, Pastor Joe, for what you do. It's so cute. Uh, My son, Caden, was clapping too, like right there. He was like... <laughs> anyway, hey, so listen, it is, uh, it is October, and so what that means is, is that as you guys are walking your neighborhoods, driving along, you guys are seeing uh, pumpkins in the driveways, pumpkins, you know, on the porches. Uh, we're seeing bales of hay just randomly everywhere. Um, pumpkin spice latte is back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you guys just got saved. Um, and, you know, the other cool thing, too, that you're seeing is, is we're seeing, uh, you know, the weird stuff in the yard start to pop up. We're starting to see uh, skeletons, ghosts, 
um, coffins, inflatable dragons, and all that stuff. And then, and, and even, you know, as if we, if we haven't seen it yet, uh, something that we'll start to see very soon, you know, in movies, you know, TV series, you know, uh, um, you know uh, networks and all that stuff, is that they're going to start to show um, just, you know, things related to Halloween. You're going to start to see things, you know, that are based on the supernatural or witchcraft or all this other stuff. And because it's, it's the season for that. And, and here's the thing is, I think the reason why... Um, why, why, why we're so fascinated about that stuff, the reason why we put spider webs up on our homes and all these other things. For some of you guys, you already had spider webs, so it's okay, you're cool, you blend in now, so don't worry about it. Um, but, but I think the reason why like, we, we do all this stuff is because as humans, we have a fascination for the supernatural. We have a fascination for the spiritual. And, um, and so this morning, but, you know, not just this morning, but for the next couple of weeks, what we want to do here at COC is we want to talk about the supernatural. We want to talk about the spiritual. And we want to talk about the Holy Spirit. We want to talk about the Holy Spirit these next couple of weeks. And so um, it's really cool. Uh, Pastor Joe, last week, he, 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 made, he, he made a statement. He gave a quote that perfectly launches us into the series because he, he said this. He said, a world at its worst needs a church at its best. A world at its worst needs a church at its best. And listen, I'm not a doomsdayist, I'm not an apocalyptic type person, but I don't know if today is really one of some of our best days. So the world at its worst needs a church at its best. And so here's what I know, though, and here's what I think everybody would agree, is that, guys, listen, if the church is going to be the best, we can't do it by ourselves. We just can't. We can't do it up here. We can't, we can't do it in and of ourselves. If we're going to be the church at its best, then we need to be led by the Holy Spirit, and we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. We need to be led by the Spirit. We need to be empowered by the Spirit. But here's the problem. <laughs> the, the problem is, is, is we know what to do. Most of us in this room, we know what to do with God the Father. We know what to do with God the Son. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, <laughs> you're like, ah. A lot of us in this room, we don't know what to do with it. Or even if you're saying it's a it, then obviously we don't know because the Holy Spirit is a him. It's a person. He's a person. And then so we don't know what to do with him. We don't know his role. We don't know how he's like. We don't know how he sounds. We don't know what he wants to do. We don't know how to categorize him because we can categorize God the Father, God the Son, but we can't categorize and we can't wrap our minds around what is the role of God the Spirit. And so, uh, you know, I, I think what we do is we have a tendency to, to set the Holy Spirit in the corner and be like, all right, he's good. I got him. I got him, but he's this is right there. You know, it's kind of like a couple of years ago, my wife and I, uh, we, 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 got, um, we got a Christmas present from somebody who we love, love, love very much. And if you're watching, you'll know it's you because I'm about to talk about your Christmas present, but I love you regardless. Um, so, so we got this Christmas present and when we opened it up, <clears throat> it was, you guys ever get like a weird Christmas present that you don't know what to do with, but they're like watching you and so you have to act like you like it, you know? <laughs> like, oh, what is it? Yeah, yeah, I knew that's what it was. And so when we put out this Christmas present, it was this like big, like ginormous, this, this pillow, this big circle round pillow. And it had writing all over it and the polka dots on the other side. And then so my wife and I were like, yeah, this is amazing. We love it. Thank you so much. And then like, you know, when we were done, we're like, what, where are we going to put it? I don't, I don't know. So, you know, so we tried putting it in our bedroom at first and then we're like, no, nah, it doesn't match. And we're like, well, it's kind of like made out of this like canvasy type of material, so maybe not inside, but maybe outside. So then we took it outside, and then we put it on our porch. We're like, no, mm, no, this looks weird. Let's take it inside. So we didn't. We were like, eh, we didn't know what to do with it. And then so finally, it ended up like on our fireplace, you know, like where everything goes that doesn't match, right? So we put it on our fireplace. We're like, all right, looks good. And then we left it there. And then, you know, now we're living temporarily with Pastor Joe and Debbie uh, until our home is, is finished, which, praise the Lord, it's going to be later this week. Um, and then, but downstairs where we're staying with them, there's a fireplace. And guess where we put the pillow? <laughs> By the fireplace, because we didn't know what else to do with it. But see, here's the thing, though, is that, guys, so many times that's how we treat the Holy Spirit. Is you're like, yeah, it's nice, it's awesome. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we love it. 
but we don't really know his role. We don't know how to interact with him. We don't know where he goes, how, how to treat him, how to mesh with him. So we ended up putting him in the corner. And for most of us, guys, most of us, most of us, we spend most of our Christian lives never interacting with him, never talking with him, never being led by him, never empowering from him, never wanting to hear from him because we just put him in a corner because he's nice and we don't know what else to do with him. That's the way we treat him sometimes. And, and listen, and so, so that's, that's one problem that we have of why we don't understand the Holy Spirit. There's another part of us here, another, another whole group of people here, that, that your problem when it comes to the Holy Spirit is that your perspective on the Holy Spirit has been jaded. Yeah, there's a whole other group of people here that, that maybe for some reason you grew up like this or you've seen people like this, that, that when the Spirit of God moves, people have to fall down and people are hanging from here and hanging from there and people start being weird. And so all you know is that things have to get weird or you start to see be pushed down or, or even, you know, if you want the Holy Spirit, if you want your, His anointing, you know, support my ministry for $100 a month, you know, send it to this address. And when we see things like that, when we experience things like that, our perspective of the Holy Spirit gets jaded as well. But that's not him. That's not him. And so what I want to do this morning is this. I, I just want to take just a few moments with us. And, and I want to make an introduction, a clean slate introduction. And I want to introduce you to the Spirit and the Spirit to you. And this morning specifically, what I want to do is I want to talk about what is the role of the Holy Spirit? Like, what's he all about, Nate? What is the role of the Holy Spirit? And so if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And uh, we're going to look at verses 11 and 14. So the very last chapter, the very last couple of passages of Scripture. And before we dive into that, let me just kind of set us up real quickly about what, you know, the context of this. Um, Paul the Apostle, he wrote 2 Corinthians but uh, a lot of theologians, they say that the book of 2 Corinthians is, one of, is, is probably the, uh, Paul's most emotional and Paul, Paul's most heartfelt letter. That, that he loved the people of Corinth so much that it's the most emotional letter that Paul the Apostle wrote. And because of that, a lot of theologians also say that, that 2 Corinthians probably has the deepest of spiritual teachings out of all the books that Paul the Apostle wrote. And so what he's saying, or what they're saying there is that, is that you can take anything, any, any verse from the, book, from the book of 2 Corinthians, and you can wring it out, you can twist it, and some good stuff is going to ooze out of it. Because, you know, out of 2 Corinthians, you get deep teachings on uh, church ministry, church organization, church leadership. And then so theologians say that you can just take anything and just, you know, and it'll just ooze out of good stuff. So anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into it. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And starting at verse 11, it says this, it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another. Verse 12 is, is one of my favorites. I try to exercise with my wife here. It says, Greet one another with a holy kiss. And the Nate translation says, As much as you can all the time. Um, anyway, praise the Lord. Yes. All right, I'm feeling like we're supposed to do that again after the service, babe, so just to let you know. Okay. Um, so, verse 13, though, says this. All God's people here send their greetings, and then catch this. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we get that, right? Because Jesus Christ came to give us grace. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and may the love of God the Father, God sent his son. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son. Whosoever believes him. So we get that God loves us, that Jesus gives us grace, God loves us. But then check out the word here. It didn't say, Paul didn't say, may the fellowship of Jesus. Paul didn't say, may the fellowship of God. Paul says, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. May the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And so let's, let's talk about that. Let's break that down here real quickly. Okay, so what does that word fellowship mean? The word fellowship comes from the Greek word koinonia. Everybody say koinonia. You guys sound great. See, say it again. Say koinonia. Koinonia, awesome. And that word koinonia, you can basically, it means this. It means fellowship, association, community, communion, joint participation, or intercourse. Or another way to word that is, is that if we can break it down, the word kononia means fellowship, 
partnership, or intimacy. The word fellowship, well, the word koinonia means fellowship, partnership, and intimacy. So let's, let's, let's dive into those real quickly, okay? So the word fellowship, the word fellowship, the word fellowship is this, is that um, have you ever had a friend that, that you just love being in their company? You don't have to say a word, you don't have to do a thing, you just love being in their presence. So, um, you know, it's kind of like uh, uh, back when I it was my first year in Bible college in Atlanta, um, I met this guy, uh, and he became a good friend of mine. Uh, at first, we didn't like each other, but I should have known because that the Lord had been spaying in my mind because on his mind, for me, excuse me, because he was from Pottstown, Pennsylvania. And then so, so we met in Atlanta, and man, at first, we just did not like each other. Like, we just were both the same person, so we just rubbed each other the wrong way. And then uh, the summer after our freshman year, I invited him out to San Diego, and he stayed with me for a couple of weeks, and we ended up liking each other. We ended up getting to know each other. And then after that, man, we came back for a sophomore year, and we got into all sorts of stuff together. It was crazy. And so, you know, like, like for example, like one of the fun things that we did was, um, <laughs> one of the fun things that we did was, uh, was, was we were borrowing our friend's Jeep. And him and I had never ridden a Jeep before. And the church at that time that the college was based out of had all these like rolling hills. It was like rolling hill, then parking lot, then another rolling hill, then a parking lot, all these rolling hills. And so we thought, dude, we're in a Jeep. We need to go off-roading. Let's, do, let's take these hills, bro. So it was like late at night, we hopped in the Jeep and we were going up and down the hills and going here and going there, just all over the church parking lot. And then at the end of it, we looked at the hills and these well manicured hills, bro, like they had tire marks all over. It looked like somebody had played tic-tac-toe across the lawn. Like it was, it was crazy, it was bad. And so we're like, dude. And so we, got, we, we did just, just dumb stuff like that. But there were also moments when, when him and I would just sit together and would just like be driving somewhere and we wouldn't have to say a word because we just enjoyed each other's company. We enjoyed each other's company. And so, do you know that the Holy Spirit wants you to enjoy Him? And did you know that He wants to enjoy you? See, a lot of people, you know, you ever play that game? Um, hey, listen, if you could talk to anybody in history, you know, if you could have coffee with them, who would you want to have? And then, you know, some people, you know, say all this stuff. And if you're Christian, you say Jesus, obviously, because you have to, right? And then, so who would you have a cup of coffee with? Jesus. But here's the thing, though, is that I've heard people say that, and I'm like, no, you wouldn't. Like, yeah, I would. No. And I'm like, no, you wouldn't. Because you can have a cup of coffee with Jesus anytime you want to because the Holy Spirit is always with you. Holy Spirit is always with you. You can always have that conversation because the Holy Spirit is living inside you. In fact, Jesus put it this way. Jesus put it this way in John, where is it on my notes? Um, in John 16, Jesus puts it this way. He says, listen, it's better for you if I go and leave. Because if I stay, the Spirit can come. But if I go, then the Advocate, then the Spirit can come. It's better for you. What's he saying? He's saying that, listen, he's saying that, he said, he's saying to this for us. He's saying that, listen, the Spirit is better for you than I am. That's what Jesus is saying. Why is that? Because if Jesus were here in person, right, then like if Noah or Nevin wanted to talk with him, then they'd have to take turns like talking with him. Like, hey, your turn, my turn, awesome. Talk to Jesus. All right, now Debbie wants to talk to you. Awesome. And so I get it that Jesus is here in the flesh, but did you know that because the Spirit of God is here, you and she and he and I at 2 a.m. in the morning, at 5 at night, whenever we want, wherever you are, the Spirit can fellowship with you. Fellowship with you. And so that's what God wants. God wants to enjoy you, and he wants you to enjoy him through the Holy Spirit. So the next time you're driving down the road, have a conversation with him and say, hey, Holy Spirit, how you doing? What, what do you want to speak with me today? When you get up in the morning, say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Is there anything you want me to do? Because the Spirit of God is always with you. He wants that fellowship with you, okay? Uh, so the second word here of koinonia is partnership. Joint participation is, is partnership, partnership, partnership. Um, Legos. I love Legos. You know, for those of you guys who love Legos in the house, you know that, man, they're, they're awesome. And then so um, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, my dad, he died when I was four years old. He died literally like the day after my sister was born. And then so I am blessed, though. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed that on both hands I can count 
how many memories of the different types of memories I have with my, just by the way, if you guys see it, yes, my fingers are painted gold, gold, goldish type color because I have daughters, number one. And because whenever Sophie painted my fingernail polish, uh, or yeah, painted me with fingernail polish, uh, the Lakers won that night. And the Lakers have been winning since. So the Lakers will continue to win because I have this on their Go Lakers in Jesus' name. Okay. So, um, but I can count though, I can count though on my hands how many memories I have of my dad. And praise the Lord, they're all really sweet. They're all really good memories. And so one of the memories I have with him is that when I was, you know, when I was younger, that we used to play Legos together. And he would lay down this piece of plywood and then on that plywood, he would take the bucket of Legos, and then he would just like dump it all over that plywood, and then we would just go in together. And so we would build it together, and then so we would get down there, and then he would say, what do you want to build? And I'd say, let's build a police car. And I remember one time he built this police car, and I was like, no, not like that. So then he broke it apart, and then after then he did it again. I was like, no, not like that, Dad. And I remember he broke it apart, and he got really frustrated. He was like, I am building it the best that I can, son. And I was like, but, Dad, it's not good enough. And he's like, fine. And so he did it again, and then he finally built it to, like, the way that I wanted it. And then by the time it was done, me being a little kid, I was like, oh, look what I made. <laughs> How many of y'all realize I didn't make that? I didn't do that. It, it was the man. It was him. Right? He was the man. He did that. I didn't do that. He did that. And he probably could have even built better. I mean, better. He just wanted me to build with him. That was the point. Did you know that the point of the Holy Spirit, did you know that it's hardly, I'm not going to say never, it's hardly about what we do. It's always, 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 always going to be about, though, who we are and how we do it with him. How we do it with him. So, so, like, like, so, so catch this, right? Catch this. The Holy Spirit, he wants to partner with you in the work that he wants you to do. So, so, like, you know, okay, so let's look at this passage real quickly. In, in Exodus chapter, where are we at here? Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. It says this. It says, Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? So basically what was going on in this passage is that the Israelites, man, they had just built the golden calf and that they were sinning against God and God was about to smite them. God was about to take them out of the land. And then Moses comes up, and Moses says, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, Lord, hold on, hold on, wait for me, hold on, don't do it. And he starts, he starts talking to the Lord about, Lord, listen, I know what you want to do, I know you're going to be right in doing it, I know your plans, but, but Lord, listen, let me plead with you. <laughs> do you understand what just happened? An infinite God allows a small, itty-bitty human to plead with him? and to work with him, and to cause him to shift and to change. And then in verse 14, later on it says this, it says, Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Why? Because Moses came and he partnered with God. He said, God, if it be your will, let's just do, let's, let's change some things around. Why? Because God was doing it with Moses. So yes, listen. God is a sovereign God, and you need to obey him. At the end of the day, we need to obey him. But, but listen, I've got to tell you this. A lot of people, the reason why they're not attracted to Christianity is because they feel like that when you become a Christian, you have to be a robot. Just do, do what God says. Do what the Holy Spirit leads. Beep, beep, beep. And then, never, then you lose your personality. Then you lose who you are. No. Listen, just like, just like you as any good parent will want to do things with your kids, God just doesn't say, move out the way and let me do it. God says, no, 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 come here, let me. Why? Because in doing it together, you become more like him, more of you, for more of him, and then his glory is reflected in an even more beautiful way. Did you know, did you know, did you know that God has a plan for each one of you? He does. Now, now listen, not, not all of you are supposed to be in full-time ministry, and that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that, did you know that God has given each and every single one of you guys gifts? 
Some of you, your gift is hospitality, that you are warm and welcoming. Some of you, your gift is leadership. Some of you, your gift is administration. Some of you, your gift is intercession and prayer. Some of you, and there are all sorts of gifts that you have. And each one of those gifts express a different uniqueness to God's glory. He does. And listen, if you're sitting here and you do nothing with your gift, you know, you know that parable about the servant who did nothing with the talent that was given to him? Guys, listen, God's given us gifts, but you don't have to do it alone. In fact, let, let me even take, take it a step further. This just came to my mind. Um, you know, when Jesus gives us the Great Commission, he says, go ye therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You guys know that, right? We all know that. But then what does it say afterwards? It says, and lo, or know that I am, come on, say it with me, with you always. So God didn't just say go and do. God said, let's do it with partner, joint participation, that we can't do it alone. Partnership. And then the last thing that it means here is that it means, it means intimacy. Intimacy. The word koinonia means intimacy. So um, I love the fact that I've been married now. A lot of you guys have been married a lot longer, and kudos to you guys. Um, I love the fact that I've been married to my wife, Alyssa, for 12 years. And, and man, it's one of the joys about being married for that long is that as the longer you get married, the more you get to know each other, right? The more you get to know. And, and the more that you get to know, the less you have to speak because you just know. You know what I'm saying? Like, like for example, Alyssa and I, we, we, we both, we have to tone it down when we're, when we're around other people because we have to be Christian um, because we're pastors. Uh, but man, but we are competitive when it comes to board games, like just, mm. And so we've learned that if we want to remain healthy and married together, we need to play on the same team um, as much as we can, as much as we can, uh, or else it's bad. Um, so, so, so anyway, so, so when we play board games, though, it's funny because Alyssa can look at me, she can give me a look and be like, and then, like, that basically says, listen, that movie you just did sucks, okay? Like, you stink. Like, step it up, Nate. And I'm like, and then that means, like, I don't know. That's all I had. I'm sorry. Gosh, like, just leave me alone. And then she'd be like, okay, fine, but do better next time. You know? And so we can talk like that without saying a word, right? You guys know it. Like, you, you've been there. Like, you guys, I mean, for some of you, it's bad. Like, your wife looks at you, and you're like, oh, and you just... I got to go hunting, guys. Got to, you know, so we, we know when our wives talk to us. We know when our husband, we can just say without saying. But then that doesn't come just overnight. It comes with, with time, getting to know each other, getting to know one another. And just there's, there's that intimacy. Uh, another one of my favorite things with, with you know, being married for, for 12 years is, is I love it that, you know, at night when the kids go to bed, we can just sit down next to each other and, and we can just talk, man, just talk. It was really cool. I had a date. We had a date last night with a couple of, uh, of other couples, and that was fun. But on the way home, we loved it that we could just talk, and she could share her heart, and I could get an insight to her, and I could share my heart. She can get an insight to me and what's going on inside. Why does that matter? It's because there's a sense of fulfillment. There's a sense of security when you feel like you're fully known by somebody else. When you feel like somebody else full, fully knows you, fully understands you, can fully know what you're thinking, there's a sense of security and fulfillment that comes from that, that they know you. And, and guys, listen, it's, it's not different from the Holy Spirit. Uh, listen, He wants you to know that He wants you, He wants you to be, He wants you to fully know Him, but He also wants you to know that he fully knows you. For some of you single moms out there, he wants you to know that he sees you. For those of you guys who are struggling out there, he wants you to know that he's with you. He wants you to know that he's with you in the grind, day in and day out, early in the morning, late at night, the things that you have to do, that you are fully known by him. You know, I, I think of uh, when Hagar uh, left Abraham and Sarah and then she ran away from him and then at the end of it, then she was crying. And then after that, then God revealed herself, himself to her. And then she named that, oh, man, I forget, Beth, Beth Leroy. I forget what she named it. But basically, the, what she named it was, I named this place the one who sees me. 
because God sees you and he knows you and he loves you with all of his heart. See, there's a sense of security that comes when somebody fully knows you and embraces you and loves you just the way that you are. And that intimacy, guys, that can only come from God. My wife can feel that to some point, but at the end of the day, God's, let's check this out real quick. Ecclesiastes 3.11, it says this, that he has made everything beautiful in his time. He has set eternity in the human heart. He's created this eternally, this, this eternal shaped void that we have. Uh, Psalm 42.7 says, says this, as deep calls to deep. Guys, that, that deep yearning, that deep craving to be known and to know somebody, that deep craving for intimacy Guys, at the end of the day, that can only be filled by the Holy Spirit, the one who is always with you, the one who wants to fellowship with you, the one who wants to partner with you. Intimacy is what the Holy Spirit is here for. Intimacy. So um, here's the thing, though. Let let me just say this, and um, we'll do something really cool in just a moment. Is that if I were being intimate with somebody else besides my wife, would my wife want to be intimate with me? <laughs> the answer to that is no. No, that's not smart at all. In fact, you might be a dead man after that if that happens. <laughs> Guys, it's the same way with the Spirit. You know, the Bible says our God is a jealous God because he's, he's a person. He's a, he wants a relationship. And so, listen, if, if our first priority, if our first craving for intimacy, if we point that towards something else other than God, then listen, that is wrong. If you're filling your time, you're filling your mind, you know, with, you know, football stats, football's back. You know, if you're filling your mind with that, if you're pursuing your career, if you're pursuing, the, you know, whatever else. Guys, listen, he is a jealous God. And so if you want intimacy with him, you've got to prioritize and isolate that intimacy with him. Intimacy with him. So, um, so where do we go from here? What do we do? Well, the spirit is always here. He wants to speak with you. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to partner with you. He wants to be intimate with you. That's, that's what he wants to do. So what we're going to do here in just a moment, and if for those of you who are joining us online, I want you to do this as well too, okay? What we're going to do here is we are going to embrace the awkward, and we are going to just pray a prayer, and then in a moment, we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and speak to us what exactly what he needs to speak to us. We're going to open up our hearts, and we're going to say, Holy Spirit, speak. So... Um, everybody, even you guys at home, go ahead and do this with me. Everybody just go ahead and close your eyes. Close your eyes. And everybody here, breathe in. Everybody breathe out. And just as a sign of receiving, would you go ahead and just hold out your hands like you're waiting to receive something. And everybody go ahead and just, just pray this prayer with me. You don't have to say it out loud, but you know, meet it in your hearts. Say, Jesus, I open my heart to you. You've always been there. You are here now. Holy Spirit, speak to me exactly what I need to hear my heart and my mind are open. Speak. I believe right now that some of you, hmm, I believe that right now that some of you, the, the Lord's saying to you, 
my child, you're, you're right where you belong. I love you. I missed you. I believe to some of you right now, he's saying to you, simply, I, I see you. You're not alone. I, I see you. Some of you right now, he's affirming your identity in him, that you are a son, you are a daughter of God, and you're not who you were or who you used to be or what you used to do. But right now, he's telling you that he sees you as the righteousness of Jesus is imputed onto you. He sees you as his beloved, beloved child. Amen. Amen. So listen, uh, let's all go ahead and just open up our eyes now real quickly. Some of you in this room, you spirit spoke to you things or maybe you've never felt the spirit move or you never heard his voice before and congratulations holy spirit the guys <laughs> girls ladies and gentlemen the holy spirit but see here's the really cool thing here's the cool thing here's the cool thing though is that what we just did right now you don't need to wait a whole another week for it to happen. What just happened right now, you can do at home when you're in bed. The, the Spirit of God is here, here. So you just, what we just did, you can do any, any moment for any reason. He's here. Uh, let, me, let me just share one more just quick story, and then after that, um, we'll close. But, um, so right now, uh, Alyssa and I, uh, we stay downstairs and our kids stay upstairs. And so we're separated. And so what we did was we put a monitor in our little girls are in Sadie's room. And then I told Sadie, listen, Sadie, if you ever need anything in the middle of the night, whatever, I said, just come up to this monitor and just say, mommy, daddy, we got you. Well, okay. So not long after that, 3.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, Alyssa and I are dead asleep, and then all of a sudden, like, we hear a, Mommy, Daddy, I need you. And as soon as we heard that, man, I get up, and I'm like, all right, I'm going. And so we get up, man, and then she was just not tired. She was like, you know, I just, I got her, and then I brought her back into bed, you know, and I tucked her in, played with her, you know, played with her hair for a little bit, and then after that, just, you know, she fell asleep, and then went back down. And then it was funny because like the next morning, you know, lovingly, you know, I was talking to my family and then they said, man, you got up at 3.30 in the morning. I am so sorry that happened to you. That, that's got to be rough. And I said, actually, I loved it. It was my, my pleasure to do it, especially when my child's voice says, mommy, daddy, I need you. Like, who isn't going to respond to that? And so let's look at this, this last verse together. Luke 11:13. It says this, if you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Guys, we serve a good Father, and he wants his Spirit living inside of you. And we can do that anytime, anywhere. Amen? All right, let's go ahead and let's pray. Jesus, I thank you, God, so much for this morning. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you are in this place. And Holy Spirit, I just pray that, God, that we won't be hearers of your word, God, but doers as well. Lord, I pray, God, that may this moment, God, for some of us, God, may this moment, God, be a catalyst, God, to continue on in, in walking with the Holy Spirit. And for some of us, Father God, may this, may this be only the beginning. God, I pray for a people. God, I pray that we, that I put myself under God, that we would be a people. God, who is led by the Spirit, who is empowered by the Spirit. God, that may we be a people, Father Lord, who fellowship with you, who partner with you, who are intimate with you. Because, Father, that's what your will is all along. All along. So, so with everybody's head bowed, everybody's eyes still closed, I just want to give this invitation to, to this morning is, 
You know, obviously for the Holy Spirit to be living inside of you, you first need to have a relationship with Jesus. You first need to submit your life to Him. And I promise you that once you do that, that your life will not be the same. So listen, is there anybody here in this moment, in this moment right now that maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus or maybe, you know, you've had one but you fell away and then now, listen, man, it's, it's time. It's time for you to come back home and recommit your heart to the Lord. Listen, if that's you this morning, just wherever you are with everybody's head bowed, everybody's eyes still closed, if that's you, would you go and just raise your hand and I'd just love to pray with you. Go ahead and raise your hand. Is there anybody here this morning if that's you? Awesome. Awesome. All right. So hand go up. So hand go up. All right, listen. So what you do is with me, church family. Everybody just pray this prayer with me, but then, you know, for you who raise your hand, but even if you didn't, if you mean this, you know, I want you to just say it with sincerity in your heart. But everybody say this with me. Say, Jesus, I opened up my heart to you. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I confess that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and he was raised from the dead and just like he has new life I can have a new life in you Holy Spirit may this be the beginning of our relationship I submit to you you are my Lord, you're my Savior, you're my Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Everyone said, Amen. Stand on your feet here. We're, I'm going to release you here in just one moment. I just want to thank God so much for that that word. When Christ when Christ was leaving, He told His disciples, I'm, "I have to go, and it's for your own good because I'm sending somebody to you." The Great Advocate was the name that He used him, uh, for, for who He was sending, which is the Holy Spirit. Guys, we would be lost without His presence. We'd be lost without His, his Spirit. We're a people that just long for the authentic and it doesn't get any more real than, than the authentic spirit of God. And so I'm so thankful to have him. Guys, I just, uh, before I release you, I want to remind you of a few things. First, if you prayed that, that prayer of salvation, um, we have resources for you. Uh, we're going to be, there's going to be a couple of us here at the front that if you'd like to speak with us, we want to uh, put those resources in your hands. We want to pray with you. There's also a series of devotionals that we created just for you at clcberg.com, sorry, clcberg.church slash fresh start. And there are uh, video devotionals uh, that uh, last, I think, just one week, and we have those for you. The second thing is this, guys, uh, offering buckets are on the uh, the way out there's still three ways to give is the offering bucket it's uh, directly in front of the exit door um, the giving kiosk straight to the right of the exit doors and if you're watching online or if you prefer we have the uh, clcberg.church um, website as well you can give online uh, lastly guys the vip lunch is today if you weren't able to sign up for that if you were uh, new to our church um, we're so glad that you're here we're going to be having another one the first week in november the first sunday in november and we'd love to get to know you that's what uh, the vip lunch is about it's just an opportunity to get to know who makes clc Ber or clc happen and so uh, let me just release this in prayer god thank you so much for your word we're so thankful for your spirit this is the great benefit of being your children is that we've been entrusted with your spirit we've been entrusted with your word mm, how sweet lord help us to be faithful to you the way that you've been faithful to us as we go today lord would you bless us would you keep us would you make your face shine upon us in your holy name we pray amen and amen and you're free to go